so late because it weighs nothing. I have to totally recalibrate everything around lightweight, fun, enthusiast cars. <laughs> yes! Welcome to another Kyle Connor YouTube channel video. Well, normally you see me standing next to electric cars, and that's, again, what we primarily review on our Out of Spec Reviews channel. On this channel, this is about my interests as a car enthusiast that spanned beyond the world of electrification. And I find myself in this weird, I don't know, th this weird niche of car guys, because of course, I can uh, understand and appreciate and love hardcore combustion cars that spit flames and are rowdy and make all the noise in the world. But then I can also equally love and appreciate a really nice electric car for road tripping, like a Lucid Air that also balances great chassis dynamics. And so I find myself, at least now, not knowing what to think <laughs> and how to communicate this appreciation for cars that span the, that spectrum. And I think there's very few of us that fall into this category. Of course, viewers of this channel I've seen in comments sort of assimilate with me in this sense where, yeah, I like driving electric every day. I actually like road tripping electric, which is weird, but actually sometimes around town or even especially for the fun drives, I want something like this. This is a Porsche 718 GTS four liter, flat six, of course, with a manual transmission. And it's a little bit of, I don't know, medicine for the soul, if you will, something where it reminds me how much I truly love enjoyable sports cars for driving performance. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. We're basically gonna take this up into the canyons here at Angeles Crest. There's a huge storm coming, uh, but I'm hoping we can get this video in beforehand because I've spent the week driving this 718 GTS and it's just great. It's so nice to have a manual transmission and noise and things to do while you're driving coming from someone who primarily drives electric cars or even the combustion cars that I drive sometimes are not very sporty. So you guys know this channel. This channel's not about you know beautifully edited videos or anything like that. It's just me sharing my thoughts with you and a huge thanks to Porsche for letting me make this for you, video for you. I basically said, you know, there, there's this car's been out forever. It's an old car. I mean, this is a 2024, but it's crazy to me how it still can be a 2024 because it has tech from, I don't know, 10 years ago, seemingly inside. Like nothing about this car is pushing the limits technologically. Nothing about this car is pushing the limits from a powertrain standpoint. In fact, they actually went from a pretty sophisticated uh, four-cylinder turbocharged engine in the old 718 GTS. Everyone can plane sounded like crap i've also driven that car i'll make some comparisons to now a flat six naturally aspirated and so it's like the new old school car if you will somehow you can still buy this in 2024 and porsche has no plans to change it of course there will be an electric one of these coming in the next year or two the 718 ev i believe it will also be a drop top or drop top only we'll have to wait um and, and i was actually just at the porsche engineering center in visoc and i saw them testing so we know they're getting very close to an electric one of these, but should it be electric? This is also another topic we'll be talking about in this video. So it's just a lot of my thoughts on car enthusiasm and how just because we love electric doesn't mean we don't love stuff like this. It's a bit of a, a mental mind warp, if you will. So let's get into everything. I'm gonna tell you about the car. We're gonna take it in the canyons. My friend Zach is also bringing his uh, Model 3 performance that's fully kitted out. Uh, maybe I'll have a go in that and drive them back to back. Not as a comparison, but just as a way to illustrate, yeah, electric's very effective and maybe even faster than this car almost everywhere, but lacks some of the soul that I love that this can provide. So let's get into everything electric car guy still appreciates combustion manual transmission enthusiast sports cars. So um, I feel like most car guys have the opposite conundrum as me, where they are 
combustion guys loving driving you know gasoline powered cars they're like it doesn't have enough range to drive electric and then a lot of them have their first sort of eye-opening ev experience and they're like wow an electric car can be that fast that great on a road trip that enjoyable as a daily driver is a connected piece of technology and then you go okay so then there the combustion guys are coming into the electric world where i am so a previous combustion owner, I've owned so many manual transmission combustion enthusiast sports cars uh, from BMWs and Minis and others that, uh, and Porsches, and that uh, now I'm kind of going the other way. I went so hardcore into EV and I still am. That's our business of us reviewing electric cars. I can't ignore that and I love them. I truly love them. But it's such a treat when I get to come and drive something like this for some time. So the reason I chose this car, Porsche was like, hey, we have a GT4 RS or a GT3 RS. Do you want to drive those? I'm like, no, I do want to drive those. So if, Luke, if you're watching, I definitely want to drive those. But um, the reason I selected this one is this is sort of the enthusiast spec. It is, at least in the Cayman world, the only six cylinder manual transmission you can buy new. They no longer build the GT4, which is the one above the GTS because there's such demand for the GT4 RS, and those are PDK only, you, this is the spiciest manual transmission you can get. Now, of course, you can get a 911 GT3 Touring or a 911 ST, which is wild and big, and it's that 992 generation, and I love the 992 generation, don't get me wrong. I just drove my friend Ben's 911T uh, manual, uh, turbocharged car, of course, not, not a GT car, but just enjoyed that too. Uh, but this is small and lightweight and old. The thing about this car is it has like the old nav system that still uses SD cards. Like nothing has been updated on this. And what's crazy is this car makes Porsche so much money. And the reason is they don't need to update this car. They shouldn't update this car. This is what we want. An old school, connect, connected in terms of steering feel and shifting, not connected in terms of to the cloud, experience while driving. And so here we have something that weighs just over 3,000 pounds, proper six-speed manual transmission. Come in, you can take a look. I've been using this car to shuttle us around from shoots in LA all week, so a lot of it's been in traffic. That's been enjoyable. It's got some options I'm not so into, like that steering wheel with the carbon. Don't, don't get that steering wheel. <laughs> it's not a good steering wheel. I'm sorry. But I can ignore, I can, you know, you can spec a Porsche however you want. So this one's pretty nice. It's got some of the race tech's interior. But what I really love is the induction noise coming from this entire region of the car. You smack this thing at wide open throttle. You can hear the intakes crack open and you get this insane, grunty, very nice induction noise from about 3,000 to 6,000 RPM. And that mid-range is just amazing. Now, this is not a motorsports engine in this particular one. I don't need to review the Cayman GTS. If you want to review, millions of reviews are out there. I'm, I'm here to talk about more uh, a, a philosophical situation today, if you will, about the manual transmission sports cars in an electric age. Um, but it's not a GT engine in this one. It is just basically a four liter flat six, without any turbochargers from the standard cars, modified a bit, of course. Uh, has some adaptive chassis mounts uh, for the engine, adaptive engine mounts, and pretty much no settings or options, very, very little. So this is like old school, but still sold in 2024, and probably will be sold for years to come. And it, it just is the perfect formula. They shouldn't change it because there's no need. There's things I will complain about. I'll give you a pros and cons about this vehicle at the end, but, Rather than this, let's just stop talking and go up in the canyons. By the way, if you're curious, the reason I'm starting the video here in this random parking lot in La Cañada Flint Ridge is because this target right over here is the target we go to every morning before we run the canyons here in LA. It's, it, the LA car culture thing is just great. I can fly in, grab something regardless. I take everything up the canyon. We can fuel up here. There's EV charging stations not far away. I get my Starbucks inside of this Target, although Starbucks was closed last time. Was it open again, Alyssa, when you just went in? It was back open, great. And then, you know, get all ready, meet some friends here. Always have some friends and, and stuff that we rip with. And then we just go send it up in the canyons. Some of the best driving roads in the world, truly. Uh, there's no place like this on the planet. So this is a place I come to very often, this parking lot at the top of the Target here. And that's why we're starting the video because this is what you should do, or this is what I would do with a sports car. Let's go have fun.
Well, you join me inside the Cayman now, and this is a small car. There's no way around it. Mid-engine means that, you know, the, basically, here's our flat six right behind us. Good spot. Huge trunk space in this car, by the way. Big front trunk, big rear trunk, and... Um, but not big enough for our suitcase, actually. We had to leave that at the parking garage and <laughs> throw everything in. And it is fun driving a small car. What I really can't wait for to experience is the, the electric one of these. I don't know what I would go for at that point. Do you go for an electric sports car? Me, probably, because the viewers would be interested in that. But if I didn't have a YouTube channel, I was just thinking, what would I want? Something like this, I think. So what I do to start this car, because I'm a nerd, is I kick on accessory power. I switch it into individual, which I have to kick on the sport exhaust, if you see this option down here. And so sport exhaust on, suspension and comfort, everything, you know, back down. And I actually, the way that I have individual set in this car is in the base powertrain. There's normally, you know, basically normal sport and sport plus, um, but sport and sport plus keep on auto blip. There's no way to shut off auto blip on this car. If when you go from for the EV guys, maybe, maybe from fourth to third, I like to do my own rev match, um, but the car does it automatically and it's amazing and it's fast. And if you're just like, okay, I'm in a spicy situation. You don't want to heel toe. You can, yeah, just hit it sport, sport plus. Um, but I keep the car in, in normal mode. It also gives it a pretty long throttle pedal, which I like. So huge modulation. And I've seen no difference really in the cooling strategy. Um, sport and sport plus keeps the revs up just a little bit higher at idle, but it shouldn't make much of a difference. And um, yeah, while cruising, there, there seems to be no performance difference in the modes. Sport mode is the worst mode, I think, because this is like what people want an impression of speed to be. When you go into sport mode, it um, really makes the throttle extremely sensitive. You know, 70% of the throttle is, is achieved with 30% application. And it's just to give you an impression, oh, the car is faster, blah, blah, but it's just lame. Sport plus, Porsche gets it. They tune a lot of their cars like this. And then you have a long throttle pedal again. And in a car like this where... To be honest, if you're coming from combustion, this might feel like a fast car. In an electric age, 400 horsepower-ish, it's not that fast. You can go wide open everywhere in this car, and I do, and it's great, and it just sounds so good. So, you know, performance has, uh, you know, in terms of straight line acceleration, has changed so much in the last few years with electric that none of this, to me at least, to be totally transparent, feels fast. It's not. And that's not why you buy this car. So to start it, I go individual, which opens the exhaust. I tap the throttle to force the valves to open, clutch in, and then you get a nice loud exhaust start. And I like that. That's fun. You know, part of the experience of, for me, driving combustion cars is to enjoy the noises and the things that it makes. Again, I'll give you a pros and cons list of this car later on, but what we should do is we should toss the coffees. We should head up in the canyons and just go for a morning drive because that's how we can enjoy cars like this. So there's a trash can just over there. So let's go over there. By the way, driving this around town is so easy. Uh, you just roll off the clutch and it does the throttle for you. You don't have to use the throttle at all. Uh, so that's easy. Most modern cars work this way. That one doesn't bother me, but the auto blip does bother me. So let me go do a quick trash run. We'll get in the car, head up in the canyons and have some fun. So I have a personal issue, which is I currently do not own a manual transmission vehicle. There are, I think we just counted close to 25 cars in the garage. A lot of them for filming, for new channels. I've recently purchased a couple, you know, cheap old EVs for the new out of spec renew channel. And, you know, part of, of course, out of spec, just being transparent, being a business is I need to buy cars that I think will do well on the channel so that you guys can enjoy them and we can learn them together. And that's not me saying I don't like the cars that I have. Look at these two old E-classes and a nice LS 400 right here. That is awesome. Um, oh, a nice S2000. Oh, the car culture is great here in LA. So, um, for me, there will be a manual transmission sports car coming to the garage very soon because it's a hole missing in my, you know, this is why I love cars is for stuff like this. So the Cayman, it's been interesting because I just drove a 992 uh, 911 and this sort of back to back within the same week. And this is a so much smaller and older feeling car. I mean, look at this old nav system here. It's so funny. You have like the old school everything, and it's not a bad thing, but it's just, uh, you know, it's like, don't even use this. 
you still set your settings here in the system. Now you may have heard that little cr that crunch, the one, two crunch. That is a thing on Caymans. And this is part of my cons list on the car. And every once in a while, even with the clutch fully depressed, crunch, especially when the car's new. This one only just got out of break-in period, 1,240 miles. So I did some research online and it sounds like that will go away, but it's a real thing, the one, two crunch on these. So, I don't know, it's minor, but you definitely hear and feel it. And I go, oh, <laughs> every time, it's so weird. So little intricacies, but this is also part of the car enthusiasm. Combustion cars are not perfect. They are very complicated machines. And part of having an EV that has instant power all the time means you get lazy behind the wheel. For example, at 2100 RPM, I floor it. Nothing happens. <laughs> There's no power, but if I, drop the gears in a second and floor it. Yeah, there we go, some power. So the car makes you work for it. Every combustion car works this way. But it's fun, it's enjoyable. You really have to think and there's more to do. And you know, once you get used to the car, it becomes second nature. You really learn the vehicle that you're driving and just amazing. So this is the hill climb up into the canyons. We do this run a lot. Uh, normally I fill up at that fueling station at the bottom and <laughs> This is what car enthusiasm is all about. We have a flat six engine, we have a manual transmission, we have, I would argue, way too big of a steering wheel. I don't know if, if there's like a sport wheel option, but I would spec that, because this thing feels like a monster truck steering wheel. The steering feel and weighting and the way that how agile this car is, is all very good. And so I, again, I have it in the individual setting. I'm just gonna back stability control off one notch to PSM Sport. Keep in mind, this is a mid-engine car, so it has um, a really quick rotation speed on breakaway. So similar to electric cars, actually, this thing will just wanna go whoop, and you gotta be quick and on your game, and that's pretty normal. I guess the S2000 wants us to go for a pass. Thumbs up to this guy. And you never speed on this section of road, by the way. This is known for, you know, just patrol but up on the canyons the police are generally pretty cool they know what's up as long as you stay on your side of the road never cross double yellows you'll be just fine and that's how we always approach the things which is as quick as we can go within the limits of understanding we're on a public road and we need to maintain safety so to get the car further set up i'm going to keep the suspension in soft for now the road's bumpy so we're going to let it work this car is extremely soft with suspension and we're just gonna go have fun because that's basically what this car is built for. By the way, the price on this spec, 108,000. And then you consider how well they hold their value. It's really not that bad. Look at how freaking agile this is. That nice mid-range grunt sounding awesome. Yeah, this is a road you typically just leave suspension in soft form because there's lots of little bumps and undulations, and because the chassis is so stiff, you can really just leave the car and let the suspension work. <laughs> yeah, even in soft mode, it's pretty stiff. I'm gonna leave it in third here, just so you can feel this torque curve pull us out. So that's just matted, really nice. <laughs> you know, I, I sometimes in the EV world start to think, okay, 5,000 pounds, not bad. <laughs> this is 2,000 pounds lighter than most cars that I drive, which is just amazing. And you definitely feel that weight. It's got really long gears, really long gears. And uh, that's always been a Cayman thing. I wish they would shorten up the box a little bit, but love that I can do my own manual rev match downshifts. And it makes some power up top, no question, when you keep this thing on boil. Oh, it sounds like a Porsche. Yeah, buddy. On the brakes. Heel toe downshift. All the senses you want. Enjoying a combustion sports car. Leaning in the corner. Over 1G of road holding. Alyssa's going for her coffee. This is no time to drink. What's going on? It was spilling. Oh, no. What do you think, Alyssa? What's your impression of a sports car like this? Uh, I think it, it's hundred percent necessary. I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of all these going EV. I think there's a time and place for these kind of cars, and uh, totally necessary and totally fun. Absolutely. I enjoy them. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, 
not everything needs to be electric. And I feel like even though Porsche is building an electric one of these, maybe they'll prove me wrong. This should stay combustion. So can we figure out what to do with this cup and then uh, we can go have some fun? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, we have chugged the coffee. We have the cup down here. Cup holders are closed and we're ready to have some fun. What do you say, Alyssa? Let's go. All right, let's go. chassis feel and balance I would imagine to this but it's just gonna be silent and is that gonna lose the fun of working for those gear changes what do you think Alyssa I mean for me I don't like to be in silence too much because that's too much time for, with myself <laughs> in my own brain so I like hearing all these different things and the feeling and the movements and actually working to get uh, the power that you want and then hearing it all happen it's uh, just so many different things that are happening in order to drive. It's really great. It's yeah. really fun. So I think we've learned that we can give up a lot of speed. Let's go, Honda. We got to pass this truck. Yeah, I think we got it. Thank you very much to the plow truck. Little hazards to say thanks. Um, I think we've learned we can give up a lot of straight line acceleration and like zero to 60 figures that don't matter for enthusiast driving. Thanks to the S2000. And we can have fun and have a great noise behind you and say, yes, this is what we are looking for. Look at, no matter how much steering I put in, the car just keeps turning and turning. And to keep in mind that this is only a GTS, this is not the GT. I'm never happier than when I'm driving something like this. That's what I'm missing from electric, and I still have never experienced an EV. Taycan, GTS sedan I've had on these roads, effective, I would say enjoyable, fun car. This is another level, and there's levels above this. GT3 goes even more hardcore. But what I think the Cayman GTS shows is you don't need a hardcore racer to still enjoy yourself. Now, my personal preference would be to go for something a bit more hardcore like this. The GTS came in this one is really a good balance if you want a daily driver that still doesn't beat you up, but you can take up here and have some fun and really put some very big speeds on. Love this mid-range. What I was going to say is, for me, the perfect two-car solution or multi-car solution is have electric for daily, electric for road trips, I still think are so much more fun uh, and really not that much slower than combustion road trips. However, for, um, for the weekends, you want a sports car and I want that sports car to be wild. I really want it to be insane. The GTS is still a pretty dailyable car that you can take up here and have some fun. But this is not like a you know, 911 ST or one of these crazy cars. It certainly doesn't cost to that level either. But I think it's worth, for people who are in my situation, get the more special ones for the weekends. So let's go find Zach. Maybe we can find him around here somewhere. Go check up, see what his Model 3 is like, driving, driving that back to back with this. And then um, we'll have some conclusion somewhere in this video. I don't know. It's the Kyle Connor channel. Nothing ever makes sense except for great noise. Love it. Hello. Old Caymans look the same as new Caymans to people, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's a formula that works. Don't mess with it. And Porsche hasn't.
flip in his car. So easy. <laughs> Would I be going faster on the straightaways in a Lucid Sapphire or a Tycon Turbo S? Absolutely. Would I be having more fun? I don't personally think so. Because around these corners, look at this, you can just lean the car in. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, this is the dream. It's only a GTS and it's still this enjoyable to drive. I was expecting Zach's awesomely modified Model 3, but he's brought this 6,000 pound behemoth over here. It's a 6,000 pound boat. That's and right. Actually, it, it holds its own up here. It yeah, really dude, does, you were hustling this thing. Yeah, no, it, it moves, <laughs> but it's, it's still, I, I want my three. So you just went for a ride in the 718 with me. We're both EV nerds. We love Taycan, we love Teslas, we love all these cars. What's your impression from an EV guy liking combustion? I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think a daily driver is your EV and performance car is awesome. I mean, it's the best daily driver you, money can possibly buy, but on the weekends, having something like that is just, there's nothing like it. Yeah, that's kind of what this whole video is about, which is like, yeah, we live in this electric world, but you and I both get in this car and we're like, smiles. yeah, exactly. It just makes you happy. Horsepower, but also the 380 or whatever that does, and yeah. you still smile too. Absolutely. Yeah, because that's a plaid one and it rips and it's crazy and that will make you smile this is just a full experience. So not to say one's better than the other. Honestly, this is a pretty good two car solution right here. I think, I think either this or like a Cybertruck would be a good, a Cybertruck, Flat X, and like a GT4. Hell yeah. Is ultimate two car solution. Yeah, I think you and I probably agree. If you're gonna get the combustion car like this just for the weekends, get the real spicy ones. Get a GT4 or a GT3 if you can. Absolutely, yeah, this is an amazing blend of daily ability, soften the suspension down. It's quiet when you turn the exhaust off. But I think for us electric guys, we want something pretty hardcore. If I'm going gas, I want something hardcore. Yep, absolutely. So fun day up here in the canyons. We're going to do some more driving, but uh, yeah, let's continue. We are just about to go ahead and do some more driving, but we just noticed snow is coming in. What the heck? It's 45 degrees. I don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah, it's 45. This one says 46. Uh, but it is actually starting to flurry. So it's chilly. We're not going to go too hard. Let's just go have a nice gentle cruise over to where we want to go, which is this little dirt parking lot where we go all the time to chat. Sound good, Alyssa? Sounds great. Look at this, we have like, it's hailing outside or snowing and ice raining. Sleeting. Raining. Sleeting, that's the word, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all the Californians, oh my God, what to do? Crash. <laughs> that's right, if we're in California, we should just send it into a wall. <laughs> at the just mere thought of snow. But hey, this car is balanced. It doesn't weigh much. As long as the sleet isn't sticking to the ground, we're good. But we are gonna just back it down a little notch or two, just considering the weather conditions. <laughs> wow, look at this, it's really coming down. Now it's rain, sleet. Well, as we're coming to a close on I guess having fun with a manual transmission sports car. Uh, the one thing that I keep coming back to is this is going to be an electric car. What will an electric 718 be like? And I think technically it's going to be impressive. And I'm sure when you have wide open road and you can really work the car, it will be enjoyable. The thing is though, 
with an electric car to really be pushing the limits and having, I would say, an engaging driving experience. You gotta be going fast. With this one, I'm stuck behind a pickup truck with a ladder in the back. I can change gear all I want. Heel toe, practice, bam, there's third. And then you're in fourth, and you move around, and there's things to do, and there's noise. And so, you know, I'm going 50 miles an hour, but I still have things to do. It's still enjoyable. I'm still having fun. I'm still occupied. I think that's the big thing for me is there's something going on. And on a county road like this, speed certainly is one area of enjoyment, but experience, knowing your car, learning your car, honing your skills, which uh, driving manuals I've been doing my entire life, but it's great to always refresh that part of the brain and you can let them get ahead, drop the gears, let the thing run out and sing. It's got, you know, really long gears in this one, so maybe this isn't the best example, but just having fun. That you're not gonna get with an EV at all. Oh, he is pulling for us, nice. And we have a tunnel, so join us. Windows down, little hazard to say thanks. So, let's run it through the gears, yeah? should have something like this in the garage if you truly love cars you need something that gives you some passion and yeah you're not the environmental aspect we drive electric 99% of the time for the weekends let's enjoy what mechanical engineering is all about thanks for watching another Kyle Connor YouTube channel video love the shifter in this car Thank you. 